Guys, I came back on to do the video. The devil can play crazy all he wants to. I'm not the one tonight in Jesus' name. I'm recording this video and I'm recording this word. I'm uploading um, the other video right now, the part one to trust in God. And that's how I know that this is this message is for somebody, even just one person. I'm going to be obedient and release the word. We're going to pray tonight. Okay, we're going to pray tonight. We're going to believe God for breakthroughs and miracles for those of you that are listening and joining on. And I'm going to release this word. And I'm going to release what God has for me for the people in the name of Jesus. So going back um, going back to um, where we're going to be coming from. We're going to be coming from Genesis 37 tonight. And I'm going to try my best, you know, to be uploading videos as he leads. Because I have been feeling very strongly, like I said, you know, to get back into um, doing the videos. It's just, just going through this process and everything. But back to what I was saying when I was recording from my phone. Now I've been switched to the iPad. Um, what was I seeing on the phone? We were just talking about the process, you know, and trusting God. Yeah, basically I was saying I didn't want to get into like you actually being like a burnt offering and burning your real, real body. I'm talking about picking up your cross and, you know, being a living sacrifice and really surrendering to God and trusting him. Because that's the thing about faith. You know, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, Hebrews tells us. Look at Abraham. Abraham didn't know where he was going, you know, in Genesis. Abraham didn't know where he was going. Abraham didn't know where he was going. He just needed to trust and follow God, and that's what he did. You know, there's a lot of Bible, people in the Bible that, you know, had faith, and they didn't know how God was going to do it, but because they knew who God was, they obeyed him. And it doesn't mean it wasn't scary, and it doesn't mean that, you know, they didn't want to turn back, but they obeyed him. You know, obedience is necessary in this season. Like, God doesn't want our plan A and plan B. And I'm telling you, sometimes I can get like that. Like, okay, God, if this don't work by this date, I got a plan A. I got a B. I got a Z in the back. And God is like, I don't want that. If you're not going to give me your everything, don't give it to me. You know, I'll take what you give me, but I know you can give me your full heart. I know you can give me your full yes. And I know better because it's been, like I said, over seven years. So I know better, but still sometimes, you know, my human nature does step in. As with all of us, because nobody is perfect. But, you know, you know you're maturing when you really surrender into God and you trust in him in the scary places and you're believing him even when you don't see a way and you're trusting his route, you're trusting his plan. Like, there was one of the videos that I recorded last year on the Soul Session it was either last year or a year before last, um, I don't remember, that I recorded on the Soul Session. And, you know, it was talking about when the um, Israelite children were coming out of Egypt. And the video was dark, guys, because I'm doing it from my iPad. And I didn't do like a FaceTime thing, but it's more like an audio. So if you could just listen. But, um, and I don't mean to bounce around. It's just I give it to you how it come to me. But there was a video that um, was released talking about, you know, the Israelite children coming from out of Egypt. And God was saying to them, I'm not going to take, I'm not going to take you guys, you know, I'm not going to take y'all this way. I think he was saying it to Moses, he was like, I'm not going to take y'all the short way because you don't, you don't know how to fight. You haven't been this way. I'm not going to take you that way because I don't want you to get weary and, and feel afraid and return back to what I just delivered you from. So I got to take you the long way. So you can be tested. So you can be tried. I'm just summing it up in our care version. So you can be pruned. So, so that I can show you my glory on another level. So that I can see where you are. So that I can see where we need to mature you. You know, so. And sometimes that's what God is doing with some of us. He's not going to take us the shortcut way. Like the part that I walk at when I'm not at the gym. Or I'm not exercising at home. Or I'm not, um, you know, like when I do go to this certain part. I walk. For miles and miles, clear my head, talk with God, I'll walk. And sometimes I'm getting so tired because I've been undid so many laps or it's hot or I'm like, oh my God, it's a different kind of day today. And God is like, nope, you cannot take that shortcut. Even though that shortcut is going to get you on the path where you're going to go, you're going to miss what I want you to see if you just would have continued to, to go along. You know, you can't look at what everybody else is doing. You can't look at how everybody else is walking or jogging. Everybody else can't look at how you're walking or jogging. We're all, on, we're all on different journeys. No, you can't take the shortcut. You can take the shortcut. 
but you're not going to get everything that God has for you. And I'm sure a lot of you know where I'm going with this because a lot of us have taken so many shortcuts that we already know what the deals is with the shortcuts. The shortcuts are just not worth it. Sometimes we have to go the long way. Sometimes we have to go through long suffering. You know, that's going to produce patience. And th those different things are going to produce different blessings for us, the Bible tells us in the New Testament. You know, so it's not easy, but it's worth it. You know, your journey and your process is totally different from somebody else's journey or somebody else's process. So again, I don't know who this is for, but like I said, I'm going to be obedient to release the word of God to you, okay, so that you can be encouraged in Jesus name and let us pray um it was a it was a couple months that I had been on here so I was trying to you know give you guys a rundown of what was going on with me but let us pray before we get in the word and read this Genesis 37 Father God in the name of Jesus how we bless you how we thank you how we glorify you how we just thank you right now for this time Father God we acknowledge you as our God Father God we give you praise we give you glory God for those on here that are going through Father God I pray that this word will be quickened in their hearts, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that it will be a jewel that will rest in their hearts and continue to be planted as seed and manifest and sprout into a beautiful garden, God, a beautiful plant, God, for those that are not saved right now, we're speaking salvation for them in their entire household, Father God, the same way that you bless Cornelius, as he believed him and his whole family were saved, dear Lord, we're speaking that anointing over your people on this broadcast tonight, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus, where healing needs to go forth, heal the people, God, where deliverance needs to go forth, deliver, where provision needs to go forth provide father god in the name of jesus mother god is touching you god is blessing you and your child right now god is making a way you will not be evicted you will have food to eat you will have bread in the name of jesus it doesn't matter you know what it looks like the widow with the oil she didn't feel like she had enough she was gonna make a little meal of cake and her her, her and her son were gonna die but that was not the, the last meal because she obeyed the prophet of god because she obeyed the man of god because she obeyed the word of god god sustained her and her entire household for days and it says that the her oil the crews did not run out in the name of jesus so god is going to provide god is going to set free god is going to deliver for those of you that are on here sick right now in the hospital room God is sending angels of deliverance. He said that healing is for children's bread and that there's healing in the angels' wings in the name of Jesus. God is confusing the enemy for those of you that are going through court battles or, you know, different arguments or different spirits that's trying to rise up against you in the workplace or in your home. God is releasing angels. God is releasing warring angels to confuse the enemy and fight on your behalf in the name of Jesus. And for some of you on here that are comfortable, God is sending the writing on the wall. Like he sent to the house of Nebuchadnezzar. I believe it was Nebuchadnezzar's son or grandson. In the name of Jesus. And Daniel had to prophesy to him and tell him. That this very night. Your life your life will be gone. And I'm not saying that your life is going to be gone. Like how his life was. When that army came in and invaded it. And overtook them and captured them or whatever. I'm saying that the old way. The old you. The old life as you know it. God wants you to lay that down and he wants you to pick up new life in his spirit. He wants to show you visions. He wants to show you dreams. He wants to show you that you're more than what people say you are. He wants to show you that you're more than the life that you've seen. You're more than that corner. You're more than that block. You're more than that vicinity. You're more than that location. God wants to show you things. God wants to rise you up, man of God. God wants to rise you up, woman of God. And sometimes... We just have to, oh, you know, we just have to be obedient. We just have to release. We just have to relax. And it's not easy to our rational, logical, human mind. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's, 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 it's crazy to us when it comes to us being rational and logical. And me being a Virgo, we are very rational and logical and very analytical and very like, Okay, well that doesn't make sense. I know this doesn't make sense. So it's it's a constant battle with the with the faith. But God needs our yes. He needs you to surrender. He wants that yes. He wants your faith. Because see, when you give him your faith, when you give him your yes, when you give him your trust, even when you don't understand it, that's a conscious decision. That's not something that you know you you you're consciously offering that to him. That's a gift. And and I even, you know, be courageous enough to say that that may be even better than the offering, than, than the material offering, because you're offering your heart. And Psalms 51 tells us about that. It says a broken in this, a broken spirit and a, and a contrite heart, you don't despise. He doesn't despise that. He doesn't want an offering all the time. Sometimes he wants your heart because you have to be conscious when you give him that. 
we don't give our hearts to any and everybody, especially not when we didn't been through certain things in life and you didn't been hurt and God didn't heal you. You learn to guard your heart, according to Proverbs 3, 5, because the issues of life flow out of that. You learn to guard your heart. So it's it's like right now, if God bless you with a million dollars, you wouldn't give that million dollars to everybody that you know, because some of them can't handle it. And some of them are not meant to walk on that journey with you. It's like people use this analogy. If you had a little child and you had a fast car like a Ferrari or a um, you know, Lamborghini. I don't know about the cars, the exotic cars like that, but a fast car. You know what one is. And you want to give it to your child to drive. They're not ready for that. They're going to be done killed themselves and wreck themselves and hurt others. God knows what we can handle. He knows what we can't handle. And when you give him your yes, when you surrender, it's painful, but it's a beautiful thing. I don't know how many um, people on here experience childbirth or being pregnant or have witnessed, you know, a child being born. You know, when you're going through that pregnancy, it's complicated. It could be beautiful. It could start off good. Then here comes the nausea. Then here comes the headaches. Then here come these weird food cravings. And who feel like getting up driving to go get you some weird concoction of food at 2, 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning? And it doesn't even make sense. But do you, you need this? You know, here comes, you know, the contractions once it starts to grow. Here comes that pressure on your bladder. You can't barely walk. Your back hurts. You got to sleep a certain way. You got to sit up a certain way. And for those of you that done gone through maybe you had a c-section or when you did do a vaginal maybe you had a tear and the doctor had to stitch you up that's uncomfortable but once that baby comes out it's a beautiful thing so sometimes you have to go through the struggle in order to get to the glory sometimes you have to go through the pain and the pressure in order to get to your promised land and that's what we're going to get into tonight we're going to get into going from pain and pressure to the promised land talking about mr joseph in the bible this has been this word has been on my heart for a couple of weeks and i really was going to release a lot of this in may because a lot of things like i told y'all that god been showing me i know what he's going to give me i don't know the whole story but from just what you know he he Trust me to see and, and take the to hold me in this place. I know it's going to be huge, and I was going to release a lot of this in May as well as like my full testimony. A lot of you don't know my full testimony, but I know there are some of you on here that need to hear it, you know, when it's the appropriate time. So I was going to release a lot of this stuff in May, and just tonight, like like I told y'all, like these attacks and different things I've been going through and feeling like. God is like, your transparency is key to help deliver somebody else. And every time I get on the soul session, I try my best to be transparent as possible, you know, according to what he need me to release on this video, because I don't like saying any more or less, you know, than what he's telling me to do. So we just gonna, um, in the name of Jesus, amen. So we're just gonna get into Genesis 37 and we may jump around a lot, but we're going to talk about Joseph. We're going to get into Joseph's dreams. Now, just a little background um, on this. I know a lot of you have probably heard about um, Joseph. Joseph is the son of Jacob. Okay, so there's Abraham. Abraham had Isaac. Isaac had Jacob. Um, he had another son too, but he had Jacob. Um, Jacob was a twin of Esau. And Jacob pretty much was a trickster, you know, his whole life. He tricked his brother out of his birthright. Um, and God changed his name from Jacob to Israel. You know, just like he did Abram, Abraham, Sarai, Sarai. There was a lot of name changes, you know, throughout their family, whatever. And Jacob, he had 12 sons, um, different mothers. He was going through different journeys. He was going through different things. And God really began to, to change and transform him. And Joseph is one of his favorite sons. Jo jo Joseph is one of his younger sons. There's Joseph and then there's Benjamin. Um, I think they have the same mother, which is, I think, I, I, yeah, they have the same mother. I think their mother's name is Rachel. I'm not sure. I have to go back and read. But anyway, um, Jacob really loves Joseph. It's really different. Like you see how David, David's father, uh, Jesse, had all those other kids, his other brothers, and he really loved them, but he didn't really have the heart for David. He didn't really see the anointing of God on David's life. And that's another soul session I'm going to do. Hurting, hurting um, men and women that felt rejected from your mothers and fathers, that felt that rejection, you didn't feel that love, and it's hindering you to this very day. God's going to deliver you from that. That's going to be another soul session that we're going to do. 
Um, y'all let me know in the comments what y'all think about that. But getting back to Joseph, so that's just kind of how Jacob felt his other sons. Not saying he didn't love his other sons, but he had a special kind of favor, a special kind of love for Joseph, right? So um, I don't know what Bible y'all coming from. I'm coming from um, NI, the um, New Living Translation Bible, the NLT. I read the NIV. I read the message. I read different kinds, um, ones that I can understand. Uh, but whatever you're comfortable with reading, God sees your heart, right? So we're coming from Genesis 37, and I'm just going to read you guys uh, what I have. <coughs> and then we're going to kind of skip around and get more into the word. So Jacob settled again in the land of Canaan. Uh, if you want to go back in Genesis 36, and you guys know, that if you've been following my YouTube videos, you guys know I always encourage you not to just take my word for it, even though it is the word of the Lord. But be like the Bereans, I believe it was with Paul, and test test the word. Uh, go learn, you know, go read the word yourself. So you can always go back and read this. Always go back and read what happened before, um, you know, in the 36th chapter. It's just talking about the different rulers of Edom and everything. But getting back to Joseph in 37. So Jacob, who is his dad, who, who we have the background knowledge of, settled again in the land of Canaan where his father had lived as a foreigner. So his father was Isaac and his, his you know, forefather before that grandfather was Abraham. Okay, so this is the account of Jacob and his family. Jacob is Joseph's father. So when Joseph was 17 years old, I really want you guys to pay attention to when God names a place, when he names a certain name, and when he names a certain number. Because those things are very... Um, Important and precise. God is very, um, God is very detailed. God is very orderly. God is very um, precise. Okay, so this is the account of Jacob and his family. When Joseph was 17 years old, he often tended his father's flocks, right? He worked for his half-brothers, the sons of his father's wives, Bilhah and Zilpah. Remember, we were saying that all of them do not have the same mom, which is okay. Because different journeys have different things going on. But all of them do not have the same mom. And back then in the Bible, you know, they really was kind of getting down. So he worked for his half-brothers, the sons of his father's wives, Bilhah and Zilpah. But Joseph reported to his father some of the bad things his brothers were doing. So just in this paragraph, let's break it down. It's saying that Jacob settled again in Canaan, where his father had lived as a foreigner. This is telling me that it's, it's entering possession in the promised land. Okay, Joseph is 17 years old. He's a teenager. He's, he's not an adult age. Back then, it was kind of different, you know, like the way that Jews did things or whatever. And like certain customs that they had at certain ages is different than what we have here, which is fine. But, you know, Joseph was 17 years old. He was busy. He was tending his father's flocks. And he worked for his half-brothers, you know, the sons of his, his father's wives, Bill and Zilpah. Joseph was honest. And we're going to figure out that maybe he was a little bit too honest. But even with that, God still had a plan. So Joseph reported to his father some of the bad things his brother was doing. So he's an honest guy. He's a pretty, you know, he's a pretty honest guy. So verse 3. So Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other children. Because Joseph had been born to him in his old age. So one day Jacob had a special gift made for Joseph, a beautiful robe. Somebody say favor. But his brothers hated Joseph because their father loved him more than the rest of them. And they couldn't say a kind word to him. So I'm sure some of you are on here and you didn't have family members. You didn't have your own blood. That's not really blood. But you didn't have your own blood that just dislike you. For, for no reason, they don't like you, they're jealous of you, they hate you, you can relate to Joseph, okay? So, they couldn't say a kind word to him. Talk about jealousy, talk about hate, talk about envy. The devil will use whoever allowed him to use them, right? So, they couldn't say a kind word to him. So, one night, Joseph had a dream, and when he told his brothers about it, about this dream, they hated him more than ever. How could you hate somebody more than you already hate them, Right? So he said, listen to this dream, he said. We were out in the field, tying up bundles of grain. Suddenly my bundle stood up, your bundles all gathered around and bowed low before mine. Right? Joseph is going to teach us when to share with people and when not to share. Because 
certain things we're not supposed to release to everybody. I don't know who that's for. I had to go through and learn a few times around. Okay, but that's for somebody. Everything is not supposed to be released to everybody. You really have to pray and say, Lord, do I release this to this person or no? Because he's telling his own family and brothers this and they don't believe him. Right? So, his brothers responded. Let me go back. So, we were out in the field tying up bundles of grain. Suddenly, my bundle stood up and your bundles all gathered around and bowed low before mine. Right? So, his brothers responded. So, you think you will be our king, do you? He didn't say nothing about I'm, I'm going to be y'all king. He's just telling them the dream. Right? So, this is their response. This goes to show you a person heart. Which, which Proverbs talks a lot about. So his brothers responded, so you think you will be our king, do you? Do you actually think you will reign over us? And they hated him all the more because of his dreams and the way he talked about them. You guys keep seeing how that keeps coming up. And they hated him and they hated him and they hated him more than ever. And they hated him all the more. You see how that keeps coming up? So, so soon Joseph had another dream. And again, he told his brothers about it. Listen, I have had another dream, he said. The sun, moon, and eleven stars bowed low before me. This time he told the dream to his father as well, as to his brothers. But his father scolded him. Jacob scolded him, the very one that loved him, that favored him. He said, what kind of dream is that? He asked, will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow to the ground before you? See, he's not saying that verbatim, like how they're saying the word for word thing. But just listen to these people heart. So, but while his brothers were jealous of Joseph, his father wondered what the dreams meant. This is another nugget I want you guys to receive in your heart. There are certain dreams that God is going to give you that need to stay between you and God. And you need to allow God to cultivate that dream. But even in the midst of all this going on, God had a plan. In the midst of all this, God had a plan. And that's a word for somebody on here um, that's going through. God has a plan for you in the midst of all the, the mess, the nastiness, in the midst of all your good times and your glory days. Sweetie, God has a plan for you in the name of Jesus. That Romans 8, he, he will work into your life in Jesus' name, okay? So, it says, so, but while his brothers were jealous of Joseph, his father wondered what the dreams meant, right? So, soon after this, Joseph's brothers went to pasture their father's flock at Shechem. So, this is a different place because we were in Canaan and now we're going to Shechem. So when they had been gone for some time, Jacob said to Joseph, your brothers are pasturing the sheep at Shechem. Get ready and I'll send you to them. So I'm ready to go, Joseph replied. You know, I'm ready to go. So go and see how your brothers and the flocks are getting along, Jacob said. Then come back and bring me a report. Doesn't it sound like what David sent, I'm sorry, what Jesse sent David to do when they were off at the battle with Goliath? It was set up, it was set up for a miracle. Even though it it looks bad right now, or what's getting ready to happen, they're all set up for a miracle, right? So, <coughs> so he said, I'm ready to go. You know, let's go, Joseph replied. So, verse 14, so go and see how your brothers and the flocks are getting along, Jacob said. Then come back and bring me a report, like he's been doing. I've right? been giving you, you know, reports. So Jacob sent him on his way, and Joseph traveled to Shechem from their home in the valley of Hebron. Pay attention to the locations. So when he arrived there, like about Joseph, a man from the area noticed him wandering around the countryside. What are you looking for? He asked. I'm looking for my brothers, Joseph replied. Do you know where they are pasturing their sheep? Yes, the man told him. They have moved on from here, but I heard them say, let's go on to Dothan. So Joseph followed his brothers to Dothan and found them there. Right? So now it's about to get real. Joseph is about to get sold into slavery, y'all. So when Joseph's brothers saw him coming, they recognized him in the distance. And see, that's the thing with a lot of you guys. People may see things on you that you don't see. They may see you as something more than what you currently are. And they will be jealous of you and not even know why they're jealous of you or try to bring, you know, harm to you or evil to you. And they're being used as a tool. But you have to continue to walk into what God has you to walk into despite the hate, despite the haters. Amen. Excuse me, I'm telling you what I know. So when Joseph's brother saw him coming, they recognized him in the distance. And as he approached, they made plans to kill him. Excuse me, here comes the dreamer, they said. Come on, let's kill him and throw him into one of these systems. What, what a heart. 
to say that about your own flesh and blood, right? So we can tell our father, a wild animal has eaten him. Then we'll see what becomes of his dreams. This is another saying, guys, and this is so true for um, some of you that are listening. Everybody that have your blood is not your kind. And it's true. It's not a racist fact. It's true. There could be people that are spiritually, you know, bonded to you through, through the blood of Christ that are closer to you than your own blood relatives. Even Jesus' family, some of them didn't even accept him like that. He said a prophet is without honor his own hometown, man. There were some people that he wanted to do miracles for in his own hometown. He couldn't even do it because they did not believe because they were so familiar with him. Right? So that's a word for somebody. It may hurt, but God will get you through that process. So that's what they said about him. You know, we're going to see what's become his dreams. We, we, we're going to just, we're going to kill him, throw him in one of the sisters and kill him as if they had the right to do that to him. Right. But look at God. So, but when Reuben, this is another brother, heard of their scheme, he came to Joseph's rescue. Let's not kill him. He said, why should we share any blood? Let's just throw him into this empty cistern here in the wilderness. Then he'll die without our laying a hand on him. But check this. Reuben was secretly planning to rescue Joseph and return him to his father. There will always be someone that God sends you to remind you of his love along your journey, along your hard time, along your way. Whether you just came out of a hard time or going through a hard time or coming out of a hard time and going into victory, there will always be Someone that God sends on your journey, on your path to, 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 to keep you on your way, right? He'll always send a Reuben, right? So when Joseph arrived, his brothers ripped off the beautiful robe he was wearing. They went straight for the robe. They was ironing it the whole time. They were ironing his cover and they were ironing what they thought was his glory. But how many of you know in this season that it doesn't matter what they try to rip away from you? It doesn't matter if they try to get you fired on the job. It doesn't matter in the name of Jesus that they cut off certain things. It doesn't matter if certain people try to do certain things, you know, in, in the wrong way. It doesn't matter if they try to slam your name. It doesn't matter if they try to take you to court. God is going to rise to your defense. Because that coat did not make Joseph. God bless him without it. And some of you think that some of the things you lost make you. It doesn't make you. It's just a title. You have to know who you are in God. It doesn't make you. That's why you're able to continue to go on. Even if you're crying, if you're smiling. That's why you're able to continue to go on. Because it didn't make you. It's time for a new season. And God wants to do a new release. That's what it's about. And I'm not speaking harshly, I'm speaking with conviction because I have gone through this and I am going through this. So I want to encourage you. So verse 23. So when Joseph arrived, his brothers ripped off the beautiful robe he was wearing. Then they grabbed him and threw him into the sister. Could you imagine the aggression that was going on with them, right? So now the cistern was empty. There's no water in it. Look at God. They could have threw him in any cistern. They had, they, had, they had to throw him in that one where no water was in it. Because God is not going to allow what you're going through to take you under. He's not going to allow it to drown you. And the book of Isaiah says that when you go through the flood, when you go through the fire, I will be with you. You will not drown. You will not be burnt up. I will be with you. God will be with you while you're going through. So then just as they were sitting down to eat. They looked up and saw a caravan of camels in the distance coming toward them. It was a group of Ishmaelite traders taking a loaded gun bomb and aromatic resin from Gilead down to Egypt. Now let's just go back really quick before we go back because this is serious. You're not going to go under. You're going to go overboard. It's going to look like it's going to take you out. It's going to look like you're going under. But God is going to raise up a God is going to raise up a standard. The spirit of the Lord is going to raise up the standard when it looks like it's something else. Now, listen, these Ishmaelite traders, right? That's that's coming from Gilead down to Egypt. Let's go back. Just a little backdrop. Abraham had Isaac. Isaac is Jacob's father, who is Joseph's grandfather, right? And Abraham is his great grandfather, right? Abraham had a promise from the Lord that God was going to bless him with many kids. He was going to have a promised child. He was going to, you know, he was going to bless his whole seed. He was going to bless his whole family, right? Because Abraham was like, 
you know, God was blessing him in his business with his cattle, with money, with different things. Like when he went different places, he would be he would be favored. You know, God would bless him. You know, when as he stepped out in obedience, God began to really change his life or whatever like that. So it came to the point where you know, he still didn't have a child. And he was like, you know, when I die, you know, my servant, maybe he's going to get all my goods and stuff. Or, you know, maybe it's the promise going to come through him. And God was like, no, I have a promise, you know, specifically for you. You know, y'all are going to bear a child. You and Sarah, Sarah, you guys, I'm going to give it to you guys. And they got a little impatient or whatever. And um, they knew the word of God, but they got impatient. And this is where the enemy is going to try to trip a lot of you up. You're going through the process. You heard the word of the Lord. You know the voice of God. You know what God told you. And because it seems like it's getting out of control and you feel like a maniac, you know, like you can't, um, I'm not speaking the spirit of insanity. I'm just, this is how I talk sometimes when I'm being real. You know, you just feel like, oh my God, I can't, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Like you start hyperventilating spiritually and emotionally and mentally. You feel like you're losing your mind. You're like, oh my God, I can't do this no more. Oh my God, I can't go. Oh my God, I can't take it. Oh my God, I can't. Oh, oh, oh. And you just keep saying, oh my God, oh my God. And God wasn't going to put that on you if you couldn't bear it. But you're saying this in your own mind. And we know that death and life is in the power of the tongue. So when you speak a thing, you should expect to see it in your life. You have to be careful what we say. So going back. So they got a little impatient or whatever. Sarah was like, listen, I'm going to need you to sleep with my my hand my hand made my my servant my maid servant Hagar, the promise is gonna have to come through her, okay? Because I'm old, I can't have kids. It's getting you know a little bit out of control for me. I'm just summa summarizing it up how God showing me. You know, this is my version of when I read it. Um, you know, you're gonna have to um have a baby with her. God never told them to do that. God told them I was gonna give it to you. God even visited them. He even sent angels to visit them. The Lord even visited them. And gave them the word. And said this time next year. He gave them the word. So they had the word. He would say you know count the stars. Count the sin if you can count it. This is going to be numerous you know family and blessings that I'm going to bless you with or whatever right. So they got impatient. Abraham didn't say no Sarah. You know God told us to wait. God said he's going to do it. I don't think this is the way that he said it. He never mentioned Hagar to me. You know no I'm not going with that. He was like oh okay cool. And he went in and did his thing. And she had Ishmael. Ishmael was not the promised child. Isaac was the promised child. And Isaac was eventually born. Ishmael was older than him. And it was scrife between Hagar and Sarah. It was real it was real tense for real. It was scrife, scrife between them and Abraham had to choose, you know, and eventually um you know Hagar had ran away because she was being mistreated from Sarah, even though it was Sarah ideal. And Hagar had ended up running away, you know, and the angel of the Lord was like, you know, you got to go back. You know, you have to go back to, to them. Got to go back. So eventually, like, when it was getting a little bit more intense, you know, he had to leave. Like, Sarah's like, listen, she have to go. She have to leave our house and take the baby with her. And that wasn't right because Ishmael didn't ask to be here. Sarah probably didn't ask to be a servant or a hand servant either, but, you know, that was the hand that was dealt to them. And I'm not saying it's right, but I'm just telling you, God has a plan for everything. God knows how to make things work when we trust him, um, even though it may look so crazy. So, you know, they had to let them go, and the word of God came, you know, to her saying, you know, you know, even though you're leaving, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to bless you. I, I see your son's tears. I didn't even come really for you. I came because I saw the, the, your son crying. I hear the heart of the child in the name of Jesus. He heard the heart of the child. He heard, he heard his, the boy's tears. And he said, you know, your son is going to be a wild man. He's going to be against the world. The world is going to be against him. But I'm going to bless him. And I'm going to be with him. And they went on their way. So when we're talking about Ishmaelite, Ishmaelite traitors, now we're coming from the line of, of Ishmael. Right? We're coming from the line of Ishmael. So that's why I said this is very important. Right? So, back to verse 28. So, when the Ishmaelites, who were Midianite traders, came by, Joseph's brothers put him out of the sister and sold him to them for 20 pieces of silver. Remember, Jesus was sold for 30. So, he know, he know betrayal for real, as a lot of us on here do. And the traders took him to Egypt. Egypt is a totally different land. Y'all have customs different than how we got it over here going on in Israel. You know, he now he has to adjust. Now he has to learn a language that he doesn't know. Now he's going to be around people that he don't know. He's he going to be in a totally different world. He got to adjust. 
Some of you are going through seasons where you have to adjust quickly. God is with you. you he's going to teach you what you need to, to learn. You're going to learn what you need to learn. But you got to trust him and you got to obey. And, and you have to continue to keep trying going forward. Not in your own scrum, according to Zechariah 4, 6 through 10, but in his scrum. Okay, so verse 29. So some time later, Reuben returned to get Joseph out of the sister. So Reuben came back. And God will always have a Reuben there to encourage you and be with you along your path and your journey. So when he discovered that Joseph was missing, he tore his clothes in grief. So then he went back to his brothers and lamented. The boy is gone. What will I do now? So then the brothers killed a young goat. Obviously, they didn't care because they killed a young goat and dipped Joseph's robe in his blood. They they didn't even they didn't even answer Reuben. They answered Reuben without answering Reuben. They answered Reuben by doing this. Verse 31. So then the brothers killed the young goat and dipped Joseph's blood robe in his blood. And then they sent the beautiful robe to their father with this message. Look, look at the evil. This is worse than the mafia. And nothing against the mafia like that. I'm just saying this this is crazy the way that they did this to their own blood, right? So they said they 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 killed the young goat and dipped Joseph's robe in the blood. So then they sent the the, the beautiful robe to their father with this message. Look at what we found. Doesn't this robe belong to your son? Just this look at this. So their father recognized it immediately. Yes, he said, it is my son's robe. A wild animal. Look, he's not even asking questions. He's not doing no first 48, no nothing. He's just like a wild animal must have eaten him. No NCIS, no nothing. A wild animal must have eaten him. He ain't even asking questions. He's just assuming. And, and we have to watch our assumptions because they're not always right. So he said Joseph has clearly, and it wasn't clear, was very thwarted the way that they did that. It said Joseph has clearly been torn to pieces. Right? So then Jacob tore his clothes and dressed himself in burlap. He mourned deeply for his son for a long time. His family all tried to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. I will go to my grave mourning for my son, he would say, and then he would weep. Meanwhile, the Midianite traders arrived in Egypt where they sold Joseph to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Potiphar was captain of the palace guard. So we're not going to read all about Joseph, but just let me tell y'all what he kind of went through and I want you guys to go back and read it. So this we we know what he went through in Genesis 37. Then it gets into, you know, Genesis 39. He was in Potiphar's house. You know, God was with him and he succeeded in everything that he do. And I declare in the name of Jesus that as you go through your process, that God is going to bless you and that God is going to be with you as he was with Joseph and you will succeed in everything that you do in the name of Jesus. So Potiphar, you know, got him. He was with Potiphar. He got Potiphar noticed that, you know, God was giving Joseph success. So basically, um, Potiphar made Joseph his personal tenant, put him, put him in charge over the whole household. His wife was so scandalous and skanky and shady, y'all. And, you know, she kind of tried Joseph and Joseph was not interested in her like that. Basically, like not at all. He was not interested in her. You know, Joseph was handsome. He's well built. He's young or whatever. And she kind of had a lust problem and lying on people. And, you know, she basically lied and said that, um, you know, you know, I want to be with you, sleep with me. And he was like, I'm just summing it up. He was like, I fear God. Like, I'm, I'm not I'm not about to do a wicked thing with you like that. This is going to be a great sin against, against God. So even though Joseph was going through so much hell and so much turmoil, so much warfare and so much darkness and so much craziness, this man still acknowledged God. He still had his morals. He still had his decency. He still had his integrity like Job when the wife came out and said, you, you still going to serve God after all of this? You just might as well curse God and die. And Job said, you sound like a foolish woman. I'm not going to curse God. I'm going to trust God. You know, I'm just summarizing it, but he still had his integrity, right? So Joseph eventually, you know, was put in prison um, but God still worked a miracle there because while he was in prison, he interpreted two dreams. There was a there was a chief baker. Now we're getting to Genesis 40. I'm just, you know, speeding because I don't want to be on here for too long or whatever. But we're getting to Genesis 40. Joseph interpreted the dreams about the chief baker and the, and the chief cupbearer. One of them died. Everything he interpreted to them came to pass. One of them died and one of them was restored back to the rightful position, which was the... Uh, 
which was the cupbearer. But the cupbearer forgot about Joseph, even though Joseph said, you know, remember me when you're restored back into your rightful position. And it was three days, I believe, for each of them. It was three days or whatever. So then Pharaoh, so two years had them passed. If we now begin to Genesis 41, I'm just like kind of fast forwarding. So two years passed. Pharaoh had a dream. He's insulting all the, the witchcraft people, the musicians. He's, he's, he's in, um, you know, all the wise men, he's, he's consulting all of them. Like, tell me what this dream means. And none of them could tell. And, you know, Joseph, you know, then the cupbearer, it like the conviction came back on him. He like, like the light bulb went on. He like, oh my God, I know somebody who can interpret your dream for you. And he was like, when I was, you know, when I was in prison with him, he told us what our dreams meant. They happened. You know, he can tell you your dream. Cause that's a God given gift. So basically, um, you know, Pharaoh does call for him. He gets washed up, everything. He comes and he interprets the dream. And, you know, he give God the praise. And he's just telling him, like, you know, you guys, I just, I want y'all to read it because I don't want to get into it. But basically, a famine was going to come. And I don't know if a lot of you know, but Egypt back then was like, Egypt back then was like, you went there for your food. Other countries would go there for so many different things. Like, they had it going on. They were well advanced. They were well ahead of the, the other countries and nations back back in that time. So with this famine coming, it's going to cause a lot of people from other nations and countries to come there. And I got, I want you guys to remember what we read in Genesis 37 about the brothers bowing down and the family bowing down to him, right? So basically, he told him, he told Pharaoh what the dream means about the cows. He told him, you know, for a certain amount of years, you need to store up food. And then for a certain amount of years, when the family comes, the food that we stored, you know, we have that to feed to the other people. And while we have... You know the the plenteous food to give. You know you need to um you know sell it and make your profit and still be collecting on the other stuff. He when I say business, God bless him with that strategy, right? So basically, um, Potiphar Potiphar made Joseph the ruler of Egypt. Now we know that this man through went through all of this. I just want to read this part to y'all. Remember from age 17. Now I'm going to read this part to you because when I be going like, as I've gone through in my life and when I'm going through, God will remind me of Joseph's story because I feel like I'm a lot like Joseph. He'll remind me of Joseph's story and it will encourage me of what, of what the favor of God can do when you just continue to trust him and be obedient and acknowledge him as God. So Joseph made ruler of Egypt. So Verse 37. So now we fast forward and I'm going to I'm going to literally read this verbatim. But remember, I just told you, you just interpret the dream and what it means. So Joseph's suggestions were well received by Pharaoh and his officials, basically interpret the dream. So Pharaoh asked his officials, can we find anyone else like this man? So obviously filled with the spirit of God. And here's the thing. They didn't even believe in the same God he believed in. But how many of you know your faithfulness? And your obedience and your gift to God and your gift from God will, will allow other people to see that God is real and God is alive and God is living and it will touch their heart and it will change their life. How many of y'all know that? So verse 39, so then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has revealed the meaning of the dreams to you, clearly no one else is as intelligent or wise as you are. You will be in charge of my court. Listen to this. You done went through all that you done went through. And God give you the blessing like this, the breakthrough like this. You wasn't even expecting it. Look at God. Give him the glory. So he says, since God has revealed the meaning of the dreams to you, clearly no one else is as intelligent or wise as you are. You will be in charge of my court and all my people will take orders from you. Only I, sitting on my throne, will have a rank higher than yours. So Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby listen in the midst of all the people that wronged him. In the midst, I'm just... I'm excited about this story. In the, in the midst of all the people that wronged him, in the midst of all the people that saw him suffering in the prison, in the midst of all the people that saw him going through his humbling season and going through his humbling time and not seeing who, who he really was for real, in the midst of all that, the, the, the Pharaoh pronounces in front of everybody. So he said, since God has revealed the meaning of the dreams to you, I'm sorry to keep going back and forth, God, but I have to give it to y'all. Since God has revealed the meaning of the dreams to you, clearly no one else is as intelligent and wise as you. You will be in charge of my court and all my people. All, all means nobody got left out. My people will take orders from you. Only I, sitting on my throne, will have a rank higher than yours. So Pharaoh said to Joseph, 
It's a continuing conversation. I hereby put you in charge of the entire land of Egypt. That's like he's the vice president of all of Egypt, y'all. I bet he was like, I'm just telling you a dream, the interpretation of dream, and, and I mean, what? Look at God. Look at the glory of Almighty God that we serve. So he said, then Pharaoh removed verse 41. We're in Genesis 41, verse 41. I hereby, and some of you get ready for the double anointing of God to be on your life and your business in Jesus' name. So 41. So Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the entire land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh removed his signet ring from his hand and placed it on Joseph's finger. How many of you know the meaning of the signet ring? When the king put the signet ring on it, it is sealed and nobody can reverse it. It is done. It's just like a spoken word from Almighty God from Isaiah 55. When he's speaking, it has to go out and it has to perform what he spoke. And they can't come back into his presence until they did what he purposed and desired for it to do. That's that's the power of the signet ring. When the king take off the signet ring and put the signet ring on you or on it, it cannot be reversed. And if you read Esther, when the king put the signet ring on it, when it came time for the decree, when, when Haman was being evil with the plot, that's another story. So basically, so then he removed the signet ring, right, from his hand and placed it on Joseph's finger. So he dressed him in fine linen. Look at this. The robe that they thought they took from you and they thought it was going to mess you up. Look at God blessing with you with a new, with a new um, fine linen clothing, with a new, with a new coat. And hung a gold chain around his neck, representing royalty. Hallelujah. Hung a gold chain around his neck. Then he had Joseph riding the chariot reserved for his second in command. Talk about promotion. Talk about the last shall be first. Talk about increase. Talk about when God is for you, nobody can be against you. Talk about Isaiah 54, 17 in the name of Jesus. Listen, so in wherever Joseph went, the command was shot it, kneeled down. So Pharaoh put Joseph in charge of all of Egypt. And Pharaoh said to him, I am Pharaoh. But no one will lift a hand or foot in the entire land of Egypt without your approval. Here's the, here's the dreams fulfilled. It had to come full circle. Hallelujah. So verse 45, so then Pharaoh gave Joseph a new Egyptian name. Uh, God help me with these names. Zaphoneth Pania. And that means God speaks and lives. And he also gave him a wife whose name was Aseneth. She was the daughter of Potiphar, the priest of On, or whatever. Um, the Greek version that says that that's um, Heliopolis in my, in my little notes at the bottom. So Joseph took charge of the entire land of Egypt. Look at God. He was 37 years old. So do 37 minus 17 and that was the amount of years he had to endure. But look how God blessed him. Hmm. In his whole household. So he was 30 years old when he began serving in the court of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. And when Joseph left Pharaoh's presence, he inspected their entire land of Egypt. Look at God. Because one thing about God, when he speaks a word, it does not fall to the ground. It cannot be miscarried. It cannot be aborted. It has to come to pass. So as predicted, and some of you need to get your journals. So you need to get your phones, your iPads, your iPods, whatever you need to get to write down what God is telling you. Because God is going to begin to show you visions and dreams. He's going to show you things before you go to work. He's going to show you things while you're on work. He's going to show you things while you're on break. He's going to show you things at weird times of the day. He's going to wake you up and show you things. He's going to show you visions and dreams as prophesied in Joel 2.25 um, through, I believe it's 30. He's going to show you things. He's going to show you things and you need to write it down. Because sometimes it'll be like, oh, I'm going to remember you don't remember. And that was a prophetic word from the Lord. That may be a word that may hold you in a certain season that you're going through. You just got to be, uh, you know, standing on the wall. Okay? And, and write it down. Right? Okay. So then. So he was 30. He was 30 years old. He was 30. So 30 minus 17. So he was 30 years old when he began serving. That's about 13 years. He was 30 years old when he began serving in the court of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. <laughs> Remember when I told you guys to pay attention to names and locations and numbers. Look at God. And when Joseph left Pharaoh's presence, he inspected the entire land of Egypt. So as predicted, 
For seven years, the land produced bumper crops. I want you guys to go back and read it. But this is telling you more in depth, you know, what he prophesied to him by his dream, whatever. So during those years, Joseph gathered all the crops grown in Egypt and stored the grain from the surrounding fields in the cities. Right? So it's just talking about, you know, how they were how they were doing the numbers. You know, he had kids. He had Manasseh, whose name means God made me forget all my troubles and, and everyone in my father's family. And Joseph had another son named Ephraim, which means God has made me fruitful in this land of my grief. So in the name of Jesus, we prophesy that God is going to bless you all with Manasseh's and Ephraim's. That God is going to allow you to forget, you know, all the troubles in everyone in your father's family, your household that didn't believe, that didn't trust. You know, and God is going to bless you with a prophetic Ephraim. That means that God made you fruitful in the land of your grief. While you were going through, God made you fruitful. He made you, you know, multiply. He had you blessed. So it just continued to go through and saying, you know, that the famine um, spread throughout the land. And, um, you know, when people would come to Pharaoh for the food, he'd be like, go to Joseph and do what he'd tell you to do. And, you know, the famine got throughout the land and it was so severe that Joseph's brothers had to go to Egypt and they end up bowing to him. Because he was the, he was second in command to the king, and you know when you when you're in the presence of, wor of royalty, you have to bow. In certain countries, it's customary that you bow, that you show respect, or if you don't bow, you know that you you do a certain um, gesture just as an honor of of respect for for that person in that position. And a lot of us, what we need to do, we need to come into the presence of God and bow. We need to give Him our hearts. We need to give Him our worship. We need to give him our yes. We need to give him our lives. We need to just surrender. We need to give him our tears. We need to give him our heart. We need to give him our pain. Because he's the only one that can deal with it. He's the one that will deal with it that's not going to throw it up in your face. He's the one that's going to deal with it and he's not going to judge you. So right now in the name of Jesus, Father God, you know what everyone on here is going through. You know what they need. You know what you have for them. I ask that, Father God, supernatural release take place right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. If it's night or daytime, depending on where they are in the world, in the country, Lord, release it, Lord. Even if this video is listened to five, ten years from now, a year from now, three months from now, six months from now, seven months from now, release that same anointing. But let it increase. Excuse me, let the anointing increase and double over their lives in the name of Jesus. Let their lives be changed, God. Let them cry what they need to cry. Let them say what they need to say. Let them yell what they need to yell. Let them do what they need to do, God. So that you can be God and so that you can get the yes and so that they can be blessed. God wants to bless you with more ahead than what you had left behind. God desires to do it, but he needs your help. There are certain things that God don't need our help, but when it comes to our yes, and us surrendering to him and picking up our cross, that he can't do that for us. He can't send an angel to do that. He can't send your your homeboy, your cousin, and your mom and your friend to do that. You have to do it. You got to be the one to say yes when it comes to your journey, when it comes to your life. Right? You got to be the one to say yes in the name of Jesus. And for those of you that are not saved, um, you can repeat after me if you know you want to receive salvation. I never did this before in my life with saying this. But you could just... Um, I said it, you know, to confess him as my Lord, but I never led anyone, you know, to say this. But in the name of Jesus, you could just repeat after me and say, Lord Jesus, I repent of all my sins. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. I give you my yes. I give you my soul. I surrender my life to you. You are my Lord and the King of my life. In the name of Jesus, amen. So, um, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done on this broadcast. Thank you, God, for what you have done on the lives of your people. God, we come against any spirit of backlash and retaliation. We thank you that the word has gone forth with full force, full throttle, Father God. And it will hit every target in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God, Father God. We just thank you for ministering spirits and war angels that are fighting on our behalf, God. And, and, and just being a blessing, God, protecting us. Psalms 91 over us, God, on this channel. In the name of Jesus, witches and warlocks and demons are bound and rebuked, dear Lord. In the name of Jesus and the word of God has gone forth. Dear Lord, in the name of Jesus, we just give you glory for this word. Guys, I'm probably going to um, do um, another one, another session. I don't know when. I'm going to try to come on here more this year because uh, I've been seeing some things that I you know, I know, like, okay, move in that direction. You know, so um, be blessed, be encouraged. 
Um, if you guys are on Instagram, check out my Instagram. It's love.kira.7. Uh, if you have prayer requests or praise reports or testimonies, um, feel free to send them to my email. You can send them to lovekira243 at gmail.com. You guys know my YouTube channel. And I'm also on Periscope. Um, he's calling me to, to go in there. He's been calling me for over a year to go on Periscope. So I have to download the app back. So I'm going to be doing some live videos like this on the on the scope. Probably a little bit shorter, but I'm I'm need to go on, you know over there. Um, my Periscope is lovekira underscore 28. So connect with me, um, you know, for those things. And leave leave the comments. Let me know what you guys felt about this video. Let me know how it encouraged you. Um, you know, let me know what you guys thought about it or what you guys got. What was your insight on it that I probably, you know, didn't get or whatever. Okay, guys. So have a great night. God bless.